IFO audience, welcome back to this talk. Uh, in the second talk with Professor Barry Marshall, we're going to want to inspire people um, to, to love the life sciences. We're going to talk about, you know, um, what are some of the opportunities and the innovation and, you know, the, really the front lines of research in Australia. You, you've been around the world um, and, and you've, you've been in the US as a research fellow, and then you finally decided to go back to the University of Western Australia. So having experienced um, all of these countries and, and you know, their, their science um, sector. Um, in your opinion, what are the key strengths in research and innovation in Australia, Professor Marshall? Um, probably in Australia, someone says, says that a prophet's never famous in his hometown. And uh, that's true. And so that you feel more modest when you're in your own environment and uh, you don't get sidetracked quite as much by all these other things going on in the world. And so uh, the thing about Australia, and probably, you know, most countries are probably the same, if you, it wouldn't matter where you are. Uh, as I said, people are the same. And uh, to some extent, any discovery you make uh, that affects people is going to be useful uh, in every other country, in every part of the world. So don't be too worried about the fact that you're not, you know, in New York City or London where there's so much going on or, you know, Frankfurt, one of these hotspots. Um, you can nowadays see what's going on in these other places, certainly on, on the TV, on, on YouTube and things and uh, internet searches. You've got all the literature at your fingertips and you can see uh, what's important and where things, where the movers and shakers are. And so uh, you can follow that pathway in your hometown. And uh, in University of Western Australia, uh, because it's, you, you don't have thousands and thousands of, of scientists uh, there, you've got hundreds, but you have got a lot of people who like to come back from where they did their fellowship and their PhD, maybe in Stanford or someplace, I come back to Western Australia because it's, they just feel the freedom, uh, the uh, satisfaction of being back in the, their hometown. The climate here is so beautiful. And uh, you can uh, also get access to all the high level technologies at the University of Western Australia. That's what I found. Um, I'm sure so many young scientists have asked you this question, but because we do want more scientists in Vietnam, um, can you give us a little bit of advice for young scientists and young aspiring scientists? Can I give people advice uh, in their scientific career? Probably. I would say uh, initially you're going to have to work harder than other people because you still have to do your work. You still have to make a living unless there's a, an income source. Maybe your parents can fund you. That would be great. But often you've got to start doing your research around the edges of everything else. So you've got to spend a, an, an extra hour in the morning, an extra hour or two at night and do some work on the weekends uh, if you're going to do a scientific project and be prepared to work for nothing initially. And a lot of people who get into careers and get into labs uh, with quite good jobs start off doing an internship for a few months and then uh, you can show the people what your skill sets are. So when you start off, you don't have any credentials. You don't have a track record. You haven't got anybody who can write a letter saying that you're a hard worker and you're smart and you've got some good ideas. So, uh, and you don't have any publications. So you want to get involved with that kind of thing and maybe you have to put yourself in there and just be in learning mode for a while. And then you might find something that you're very interested in. You might develop a skill which is really uh, important in that lab. And perhaps you, you learn how to uh, really work some new instrument that's come along. Yeah.